The Mornington line once linked Melbourne, Frankston and Baxter with Mornington, with regular rail services. For 92 years, the line carried both goods and passenger trains, until it all came to an end on the 20th of May 1981. Nonetheless, there are frequent calls to reopen the line, and with the line still partially open, this is somewhat realistic. The railway towards Gippsland started to open in the 1870s. Subsequently, a branch line opened from Caulfield to Mordialloc in 1881, with this line being extended to Frankston in 1882 and Baxter in 1888. Subsequently, two branches were opened south of Baxter in 1889, one to Mornington and one to Hastings. The Mornington branch initially had two stations, Murdoch and Mornington. In the 1920s, an additional station was opened at the Nepean Highway in Mornington. However, this closed in 1940. There were also plans in the late 1920s to electrify the line. However, the Great Depression caused this not to happen. Then, in the 1930s, Mornington Racecourse Station was opened at the Bundawa Road level crossing. This station was eventually renamed to Tanty Park in the 1960s. Rail Motor Stopping Place 16, as the Nepean Highway Station was eventually named, was reopened in the 1970s, having been closed for more than three decades. However, the line would not be successful forever. The passenger service was first cancelled in World War II, before being reinstated in 1966. However, in the 1970s, the Victorian Railways was cutting back a large amount of rail services. This led to the cancellation of the Mornington Line on the 10th of December 1978. However, as a result of public pressure, the service was again reinstated on the 9th of April 1979. But the final blow was the Loney Report of 1980, which recommended reducing the entire Victorian Regional Railway Network to just the Geelong Line. Vic Rail thus planned to close a large amount of lines throughout 1981. In the end, the Mornington Line was one of these, with the final train running on the 20th of May 1981. Despite this, the final regular train was in such poor condition that a replacement bus had to be organised due to engine issues. The very last train to use the full length of the line was a Hastings Primary School Charter on the 12th of June 1981. On the 15th of June 1981, the line was officially declared closed. And that's the end of the video, isn't it? Like many other Victorian branch lines, it has no chance of reopening and has long been dismantled. Right? Well, not quite. <laughs> Following closure, there have been a number of changes to the line. Mornington Station was demolished in 1989, with the remaining rail yards demolished in 1999, and a shopping centre has been built in its place. The line now terminates at Yules Road level crossing in Mornington, though various parts of the rail corridor into the centre of Mornington remain untouched for more than 40 years since closure. The line from Baxter to Muraduck sits disused and rotting away. However, the line from Muraduck to the new Mornington terminus has survived. Following the closure of the line, a group was formed in 1984 with the aim of running tourist trains along the then disused line. Though the line into the old Mornington station was dismantled, the group was given permission to use the line in 1991, and services resumed in the latter half of the 1990s. In 1997, a new Mornington station was constructed, with a runaround loop for trains. The Mornington Railway continues to operate trains to the present day, with trains running every Sunday. The Mornington Railway also has plans to reopen the line to Baxter, thus allowing trains to again run from Melbourne to Mornington. This would require completely rebuilding the line with new sleepers, however the rails may be able to be reused. It is unknown when this section of line will be reopened however, for now it will just keep rotting away. More than likely, a new platform would be built at Baxter for heritage services, though the line would be linked into the main line for special services. But for now, we'll just have to wait and see. As for the future, the immediate future may see a section of the Stony Point line between Frankston and Baxter electrified. This would mean that passengers at Lee Warra, Lang Warren and Baxter would be able to access a frequent electrified metropolitan rail service. As it is, the Stony Point line is very infrequent, and while public transport access to Frankston is good, beyond Frankston it gets very bad. The project would also benefit the tourist railway, 
as you would be able to get a Suburban train to Baxter and change for a Heritage train to Mornington. This is similar to Puffing Billy in Eastern Melbourne at Belgrave, or to a lesser extent the Victorian Goldfields Railway at Castlemaine. In fact, the proposal to electrify the line in between Frankston and Baxter is nothing new. It's been proposed for nearly a century now. As far back as 1929, there were plans to electrify the line to Mornington, and it was also included in the 1969 Melbourne Transportation Plan. But the idea hasn't died either. In fact, it was most recently proposed by the Liberal Party in the 2018 state election. However, a business case completed in 2019 by the Department of Transport determined that electrification to Baxter would not be worth it, with a cost-benefit ratio of only 0.5 which means that for every dollar spent on the project, only 50 cents would be returned. And I'm pretty sure that you don't need a degree in economics to understand that that's not the best investment. However, just because it isn't economically viable doesn't mean that it won't get built. But there are other options too. For example, an upgrade to the Stony Point line, such as adding more passing loops, rebuilding stations, and making the service more frequent would make the service much more usable and encourage people to use it more. This would also likely to be completed for a lower price tag, while also benefiting more people. But as for the Mornington line itself, it may have a future van Volvos not being a tourist railway. When the line closed, it still ran through fields to what was a small town on the edge of Melbourne. But 41 years on, the tourist railway now runs for a suburban development. And with Mornington being a major centre now, it would make sense to reopen the line for regular services. Nearly 25,000 people live in Mornington, and well more than 100,000 people in the entire Mornington Peninsula, a huge amount compared to when the line was closed. It's also one of the largest areas in Melbourne without its own rail line. And while a rail line further down the peninsula is by no means viable or necessarily sensible, reopening the short extra section to Mornington for suburban trains would be a good idea. A rail service to Mornington would be a significant improvement over the current bus line. However, in addition to restoring rail, adding a frequent bus further down the peninsula would also be a good idea as well, perhaps running every 15 or 20 minutes. And once the tourist railway gets back to Baxter too, it isn't exactly the hardest thing to put a couple of sprinters on the line and provide rail service, even as a short term measure. Though obviously that is far easier said than done. But will it actually happen? Will Mornington ever see a regular train again? Who knows? For now, it's most likely and not at the same time. The Baxter extension business case said extending the line was a bad idea, but the issues of poor public transport access and service will continue. And Mornington will remain a major centre with no rail line. But for now, the Mornington line will sit disused and rotting away, a once important rail line left to sit in silence for many decades. Music